In this video we learn about the risk measurement technique, expected shortfall. What advantage does this have over value at risk calculations? And, how to calculate expected shortfall for a data set in Excel? Before going into the details, let us first learn what are the disadvantages or limitations of VAR models, and how does expected shortfall come into the picture? Like all measurement techniques, VAR also has several limitations, as mentioned here. But our main focus is on these two limitations of VAR, which are overcome by expected shortfall. First, VA is not additive. By the concept of portfolio diversification, we know that the risk of a portfolio, P, should be less than, or equal to, the risk from adding up the component risks. But, this is not true for VA. VA of a portfolio may be higher than the sum of the VAs of the components. What is important for us to know here is that expected shortfall follows the subadditivity property and thus, solves this problem of VAR. Now, let's focus on the second problem. VAR creates a false sense of security as it does not consider the losses in the tail. To understand this, let's consider this plot. It is a histogram of returns data, and we slice a certain percentile to get the VAR number. To know how to calculate VAR in Excel and create this graph, check the description below the video for the link. Now, Let's shift our focus on the left tail, where we have the losses. In this case, the tail distribution looks normal, and VAR should give us a decent picture of this risk. But, in the second case, notice this peak, way into the tail. This tells us that there is a big possibility of loss, much higher than the VAR level. But, VAR is oblivious to it. VAR is not bothered by anything beyond its cutoff point, and that, is one of the biggest drawbacks of VAR. Here is where expected shortfall comes into the picture. What expected shortfall does is that it calculates the average of all these losses, that is, the losses exceeding the VAR level, thus, taking into consideration the high probability losses, if any, in the tails. Let's see how to perform this calculation in Excel. In this Excel model, we have 1000 observations. We calculate the value at risk at 95%. That is, Y is the 51st observation in this case. We use the Excel small formula to get the 51st smallest number, which is our VA. For detailed explanation on how to calculate this VA and the histogram plot on the right, Check out our VAR calculation using historical method video. Link is in the description box below. Let's focus our attention to expected shortfall. As discussed earlier, expected shortfall is the average of all the numbers which are less than the VAR number. There are several methods to do this. First, we can arrange the data in the ascending order and then manually find the average of the first 50 data points. But, as discussed in other videos as well, changing the structure of the data is not always an option. We can calculate expected shortfall without changing the data as well. One way to do this is to create a calculated column, tail loss. We write a formula here, which checks if the loss is less than the VAR number. If it is true, we put a 1 there else a 0. While writing this formula, please note that the reference to the VAR cell cell G5 has been fixed using the dollar signs. This ensures that, as we drag the formula from cell D3 to D4, and all the way down, C3 changes to C4, C5, and so on. But G6 does not move to G7. For understanding cell referencing in greater detail, check our cell referencing in Excel video, link to which in the description box below. Moving back to the formula, it populates the column D with 0 or 1, based on the data in column C. For example, in D6 we have 1, since the value in C6 is more negative than the 1 number. Just a side note, if you are wondering why the data and the graph keeps on changing every time I make any change, it is because we have used Excel RAND function to create this data series. The RAND function generates a random number between 0 and 1 every time the data refreshes. 
So, we have a column with information on the tail losses. To calculate expected shortfall, we want to average all the data points, that is all the values in column C, which have a 1 written next to it in column D. To do this, we use the average if function. Let's reiterate our problem statement. We want to find the average of column C data, if column D data is equal to 1. So, the range here is the criteria range, that is column D for us. Let's select that. Next, we need to specify the criteria. We write 1. Finally, we specify the range where our data is, whose average is needed, that is column C. This gives us the expected shortfall number, an average of all losses exceeding the VAR. Now suppose, we do not want to create any extra columns like column D. How should we go about then? We will use the average if function again. This time our criteria range is the data range itself, column C. Our criteria is that we want to select only those data which are L, S than VAR, so we write less than and then the VAR cell. Note, it is important to put the ampersand symbol between the less than sign and the cell reference. And for the average range, we select the column C again. This gives us the same number as calculated using the previous method. We can then simply plot this number on the plot for a visual representation. Congratulations! You have learned to calculate expected loss. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you enjoyed the video.